All right guys, it's Dr. Bain here. So I'm gonna give you guys an instructional video on how to set up an ABC pillow. Now, if you don't have an ABC pillow, that's okay. What you're gonna do is you're gonna mimic the setup that I have here with the ABC pillow using very firm bath towels. So you're gonna to wanna to get a set of bath towels from your you know, bathroom, vanity, wherever, about this high, same as above mine. So it's probably about, you know, maybe about that probably about maybe eight inches or, or maybe nine inches tall. So here's how you're gonna start out. So if you get yourself an ABC pillow, it's gonna come with a cover. So this is the cover that zips around the outside. So you can see how I've taken out the contents. So here's all the different layers that the ABC pillow has. You'll see that there is comprising in here several different types of layers. So these are your top and bottom layers. So these are interchangeable depending on what your preference is. So the thicker guy here is a bit softer and the thinner guy here at the pattern is a bit firmer. So really it's just about your preference about how this feels on your face when you lay down. Um, do you like it hard or softer? So for me, I like it firmer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the thinner, more firm foam on the top that's how I'm gonna start my testing. So the way you wanna test is, you're gonna to wanna to take all the layers and that's gonna be your starting point. So let's set up our pillow. Let's go right about here. So I'm gonna set up there. I'm gonna lay down and you can do this with a partner or a spouse as well. So I'll raise this up just a little bit so you guys can see a little bit easier. Awesome. So now I'm gonna lay down. I'm gonna show you what's the ideal position for laying down. So. You can see how I'm on my side. On the side, side sleeping is the most ideal position. You can see my bottom shoulder is a little forward. My top shoulder is a little bit back. So you see how I have this angle like this. A lot of people sleep like this, okay? When you sleep forward like this, you're gonna pull out all the ribs in the top of your body here, and that's gonna make your chest collapse in. It's gonna give you forward shoulder. So you want just a slight bit back like this, you can see both my legs are on top of each other like that. You can also go in tandem like this if you have to. Once again, try not to torque your pelvis forward or backwards. You want it to be fairly stable like this. So once you're starting with the maximum height here like this, I want you to get in your position. I want you to relax. And I want you to just breathe out, let it go. And now what you're taking note of is how your eyes are. So if you have a spouse or someone who's helping you, they're gonna be looking you in the eyes and you're letting your eyes go. You're not forcing them closed and you're just seeing how much do my eyes close and how sleepy do I feel like this? So for me, I know that this pillow is too high for me because my eyes are bright, they're wide open, I'm wide awake. I don't feel sleepy at all, which tells me that this right now is likely too high for me. So then I'm gonna get up now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna pick a thickness to remove. So there's several different thicknesses from fairly thick all the way to really paper thin. The paper thin one you wanna save till the end. So I'm gonna put my paper thin one on the top of the inside layers here in my little sandwich. And because I think I'm probably fairly off of the height, I'm gonna take one of the thicker pieces out. I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna put back on the top piece and I'm gonna lay down again. So I'm gonna go right back to where I was. Nice and comfortable here. Take a deep breath in and we'll let it go. And now you guys should be able to maybe see how my eyes look a little more relaxed. I feel a little more sleepy. So I know I'm getting closer, right? But I'm fairly awake still. So I know I probably still need to lower this pillow down just by a hair. But that's why there's different thicknesses in the middle because you don't want to overdo it. So we want just the right amount. So I'm going to remove another layer, but I'm going to remove a layer that's not quite as thick as the one I just removed. So let's take out, how about this guy? So this guy is just a little bit thinner than the last one I removed. And let's see, because either this will be pretty close to ideal already probably for me, or all of a sudden I'm gonna feel really awake again, meaning I removed too much in this example. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna get in my position, I'm gonna get comfortable. 
Take a nice breath in. And I'm going to let it go. I'm going to see how I feel. Oh, yeah. Boy, I'm getting sleepy just laying here. <laughs> it's been a long week. Oh, yeah. So all of a sudden now, the feeling that I'm feeling... I'm feeling very relaxed. All of a sudden, right when I laid that down, I feel very relaxed. I'm sleepy. You can kind of tell my voice, my speech, I'm slowing down a little bit just because all of a sudden there's just this wonderful feeling of ease. My eyes are starting to close on their own. You can do a little test so you can close your eyes on purpose and you can see if there's any eye flutter. So if your eyes are fluttering when you close your eyes, that means that the height is not correct. But if you have almost no eye flutter and if your head and your, if your eyelids feel really, really heavy, that tells you you've got almost the perfect height of your pillow. So now I'm gonna try lowering it just one last time just to see what happens. So I'm gonna remove the thinnest now, because remember, see, I saved the thinnest layer till the end so now this will either be likely perfect because all I needed was just that last little bit of removal for the height to be exactly right, or my eyes are gonna be very awake and I'm not gonna be sleepy like I was a second ago. So I'm gonna lay down, I'm gonna get right back to where I was, and let's see what happens. We'll take a nice breath in, and I'm gonna relax, and let's just see how I feel. Okay, now, I will tell you from how I'm feeling, I feel just a slight bit more awake. I still feel pretty relaxed. I still feel pretty sleepy. I could probably sleep in this position more, more than likely. I could probably perfectly sleep in this position comfortably, no problem. But, I'm trying to do the eye flutter test. Eyes aren't really fluttering much. And I'll say I'm fairly sleepy. My eyes are pretty relaxed. So I'm somewhere between right there and this little thin guy right here. So I can put that little thin guy on top here, try it again, just out of curiosity. Let's just compare the two. Nice breath in and let it go. Yeah, I think, you know what, out of the two of these, I actually probably prefer it without this little guy right here. If I get rid of that. <sighs> yep, right there. So right here is going to be my perfect pillow height. I feel very relaxed. I'm very sleepy. So for me, on this specific surface, I had to remove three. A thick one, a thin one and a really thin one. So that's how you set up a pillow. Now in the opposite scenario, you can go too low, right? So I could have done this. I could have laid down and I, my eyes might have been too awake because the pillow was too low. It's the same problem. Now you can always tell if you're either too low or too high by doing another test. So let's do another example here. Let me add all the layers back because I'm gonna purposely make this too high. So by adding all the layers, most of you, this will be much too high when you have all the layers. So I'm going to lay on this guy. And now you can see I'm wide awake, right? Not sleepy at all. So when your pillow height's too high, you'll feel like your body very easily falls backwards like this, right? So if I try to fall forwards, it's not as easy. But if I rock backwards, I fall back really easily. That means your pillow height is too high. If your pillow height is too low, let's take away a lot. Let's go way too low. Now I'm way too low. And now you see how I easily rock forward like this. Now it's actually harder to rock backwards, but very easy to fall forwards. So that tells me that pillow height is too low. So that's how you're gonna set up your pillow. Once you have your perfect pillow height, like I did, then you simply just come over, you take your cover sheet, and you're gonna insert only 
the layers that you were comfortable with sleeping on. The ones you removed are gonna stay out of the pillowcase. You'll zip up the pillowcase over that, and now you have your perfect pillow height for you using the ABC pillow. Now, once again, if you don't have the ABC pillow, and maybe you're somehow finding this video out there outside of my patient base, people who don't have this pillow, what you're gonna to wanna to do is, once you did the same testing using towels, right, removing towel layers or adding towel layers, you can put your own pillowcase over the towels and that's gonna be your pillow. So you can do this with towels or you can use the ABC pillow, which I prefer, I think it's much easier and it looks like a pillow instead of just having a big stack of towels at home. But I always tell patients, if you don't have access to an ABC pillow, towels are perfectly fine. I've slept on towels many, many years myself. But once we came out with the ABC pillow, it's just so much more superior than the old stuff that I just stopped using towels altogether. All right, so stay tuned for the other parts of this series here because I'm also gonna show you guys how to pick the right shoe for you, how to set your shoes up, and I'm also gonna show you guys how to set up your car seat and how to sit properly. All right guys, so part two, let me show you how to set up a seat wedge in your car to make sure that when you guys are sitting in your car that you're not throwing yourselves forward, okay? So these come in a couple different sizes. This I believe is a one inch. We also have a two inch, and I think they even make a two and a half inch, but most people will actually be a one inch here. So first I probably want to explain to you guys what's wrong with this situation, because car seats are probably one of the biggest ways that people throw themselves forward. So you guys hear me talk about an ABC that bones get stuck forward. So how does that happen? Well, this is one of a prime example. So let's show you here, I'm gonna zoom in. So I want you guys to see a couple things here, okay? You can see that when we look at the car seat here, the front side where your knee goes is much higher than this side. You almost have a hole sitting here. And then when we look at the back of the chair, you see this lumbar shape here. So what that actually is gonna end up doing is it's gonna make your spine go in one giant C shape, which is gonna throw your bones forward. So that's something that we're gonna to wanna to reverse. So you guys are gonna see me now set up this uh, prime example of how do we set up a car seat wedge here. So let's go in here without the seat wedge first. And let me make sure I've got that set up right. Cool. Hopefully you guys can see. So I'm gonna sit in here with the way the seat wedge is on the side here. So I'm gonna sit without a seat wedge first. So now I'm gonna take a deep breath in and I'm gonna let it go. You see how forward I go because of the way that this car seat is? So this is the prime example about why most people are getting forward when they drive home out of the clinic. Because you can see when you relax, this throws you really forward. And now I put my arms out here, now I'm even more forward. So that throws all these bones forward and now we have a big problem. So by the time you get home, your low back hurts, your neck hurts and everything in between. So we're gonna wanna fix that. So I'm gonna step out and now I'm gonna put in a one inch seat wedge. And what that's gonna do is that's now gonna flatten out this big hole in the back, which is gonna give me better posture. So now I'm gonna go in, got my seat wedge in here, and let's just see how much of a change it makes. So I take a breath in and let it go. Look how highly reduced this is. Am I still a little slouched? Yeah, I'm still a little slouched, but I'm nowhere near as slouched as I was without the seat wedge, right? So now I can drive like this in a much better position. You can see how much less collapse I have in my upper chest. Now, if we're really looking for ideal, I actually have a second seat wedge in here because remember, the way this chair is shaped, it's shaped like one giant C shape, which is what's causing me to slouch. So what I tell patients is sometimes you can either get a second seat wedge or you can get a board or something that maybe you can bungee cord to your chair. I know that sounds crazy, but look at the difference here. I'm gonna fill in the space back here with a seat wedge because it's firm. And now let's take a deep breath and see how my posture looks. I'm gonna take a deep breath in and I'm gonna let it go and watch this. Look, I've got great posture now with no effort. I don't have to hold this. So now I can drive with exceedingly good posture every time I get in the car and I'm not gonna have neck and low back pain. The other thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna adjust if you can down here at the seat and you're gonna play with this. So obviously mine can go forward and backwards, right? 
So I've got mine, in my case, as far back as I can, and then I also raised it up as high as it can go. Then you can play with the back part here and just test it. So move it forward or backwards, take a deep breath, and let it go. And you can see that threw me forward again. So I've got this car seat back just a hair now. And that's as good as I'm gonna be able to get the back part of my uh, car seat. Unfortunately, the way car seats are designed, you can only get them so good. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is, and I'll show you what I've done, are two things. One of the things you're gonna to wanna to do is, when you get in your car, you're gonna notice down here, there's a little latch in many vehicles. If you flip that latch, many times you can pull your steering wheel back towards you. So you're gonna to wanna to take that steering wheel and move it as far back and as close to you as you can. That way you don't pull your upper back as far forward when you grab the handle. The second thing you're gonna see that I did is I've taken the headrest here and I've actually taken it all the way out and I've flipped it and I've put it in backwards. What that's gonna prevent is that's gonna prevent you guys from having the unfortunate situation where this headrest, when it's in its normal position, you'll find that the more corrected you become with ABC, you'll feel that headrest actually shoving the back part of your head forward. So we're trying to keep these backwards as possible. So if you just flip that, put it in backwards, you're gonna find that that no longer is gonna push your neck forwards. So that's part two. How do you set up the car seat? And remember, you can do the same thing with these seat wedges in restaurants, normal chairs, or anywhere you sit, and I highly suggest it. Because the more ABC you get, the more uncomfortable it's gonna be when you sit in a bad chair. And I would never, ever, ever sit in a recliner, and I would never sit in a normal, typical couch, because these normal couches, they do the same thing where they make you slouch, just like that, and pull bones forward. So now we're gonna go on to part three, where we're gonna go back inside, and I'm gonna show you how do you pick out what's a good shoe, and how do you modify them. All right, so now we're ready for part three, and that's shoes. Shoes is another big reason why people will get thrown forward, and when you're thrown forward, once again, the issue with that is that your bones will then get thrown forward, which makes this a long-term problem for you. So here's how you can determine whether any shoe is helping you or hurting you pretty quickly. So you can see I'm barefoot, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my starting posture here. Now today, I'm pretty forward, so I'm just letting you know already. I haven't been adjusted today, so I'm already fairly forward because of driving here in my car and other stuff. But I'm gonna show you the truth of today. So here's how you do it. You take a deep breath in and you let it go. Okay, boy, I am ridiculously forward today, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is, that's how I am barefoot, okay? So what we want is, when I wear a shoe, we either wanna be almost exactly like we were when we were barefoot, or better in terms of our posture. So you're gonna take note of how big was your breath? How easy was it to breathe? How is your balance? So when I breathe out, am I moving around a lot? I call this the drunken sailor, okay? Because if you're off balance like this, like the drunken sailor when you relax, that also tells you that the shoes are screwing you up, right? Because when you're barefoot, you don't get the drunken sailor typically when you're barefoot. Now you will get that when you're not corrected with ABC. When you're very forward and no one's been correcting you with ABC, you will likely be off balance like the drunken sailor, even without the shoes on. So let's pick a pair of shoes here. Now, the thing is I've got one, two, three, I've got four different pairs of shoes. Now each of these shoes in terms of their design, at least on a base level is what we're looking for. So let's just pick one and I'll show you. Let's pick this guy. Okay, so this is from a company called Vivo Barefoot. Vivo Barefoot, it's in the name. They make their shoes to mimic being barefoot. That's what's ideal. So when you're evaluating a shoe, what you're looking for is number one, when you're looking at the heel versus the toe, you want the heel and the toe to be at the same level as a starting point. Now, what you'll learn is in a second here, when we start modifying shoes, I'm gonna add a little bit of heel on the back, most likely, to bring the heel just slightly higher than the toe. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be looking for at the ultimate point here. But as a good general rule of thumb, when you're evaluating a shoe, this is what you're looking for, straight flat through. You're gonna take your hand and you're gonna go right on in here and you're gonna feel the inside of the shoe. And when you feel the inside of the shoe, we want no, zero, zilch, not any at all, 
art support. We don't want any art support. I know you guys have been told that art support is a great thing. You had plantar fasciitis. It made your plantar fasciitis feel better. You had a low back pain here. It made your low back pain better potentially. But what we learned with ABC is that art supports really, really do a terrible job of making, or maybe I should say a great job. They do a great job at throwing you more forwards, throws more bones forward and makes you worse over time. The other problem with our supports is that I want you to imagine a scenario, right? So if I took your arm and I held it for you like this for 20 years, right? I did the work for you and all of a sudden I let go. What's gonna happen is your arm, because the muscles are so weak, is gonna be ridiculously sore unless I come in and I hold it. Well, that's what happens with our supports. Your foot, right? has a bunch of muscles on the bottom here that are responsible for maintaining this nice arch like this. When you wear a shoe with arch supports, you are basically doing the scenario I just did with the arm. You are supporting all those muscles and the shoe is doing the job for your foot. So the problem is, even though the arch supports may eliminate and alleviate temporarily your plantar fasciitis, the second you take the shoes off, the arch actually now collapses even worse than it was before because now all these muscles are weak. And what happens when muscles are weak? They get sore. And it's the same thing with the example here. That's the true cause of plantar fasciitis. The original cause of plantar fasciitis before you started wearing the arch supports was a back issue that was unresolved because you weren't getting advanced biostructural correction. The now the second reason you're getting plantar fasciitis worse over time is now because you're wearing thicker and thicker orthopedic inserts and arch supports over time, which are taking all the work of the foot out of the equation, which makes the foot very weak. And now you get very sore and painful muscles every time you're not wearing shoes. This is why people with plantar fasciitis cannot go barefoot after a while. They have to be wearing slippers or sandals or something with arch supports all the time. So let's go back to our ideal shoe example here. So just remember once again, as a baseline piece of knowledge, we're looking for a shoe that's even all the way throughout. We then talked about when you run your hand in there, no art supports of any kind. The third thing you're looking for is you want the toe box here at the end, extra, extra, extra wide. You can see how this company, Vivo Barefoot, for example, has designed the front of their shoe in the shape of a foot. This is how you avoid getting bunions. People get bunions, for example, because when you look at a standard shoe, you'll notice that in the standard shoe, the front of it is pinched at the end. Puma is a perfect example of this type of shoe. Heels are a perfect uh, example of this type of shoe. And what happens is it squeezes the front toe box there, which then will give you a bunion like this on your big toe and on your little toe like this. It shoves them in. So this is the other reason that you want to have an extra wide toe box like this so that you don't get bunions. So that's the other thing that you guys are looking for. So now let's go into a shoe evaluation here. Now all of these shoes I have here are what I would say ideal starting place shoes. I don't really have any more uh, bad shoes uh, and unfortunately you're not going to find me buying any bad shoes anytime soon. So when you're at home, use your own shoes, but I guarantee you, you're probably gonna have a very tough time finding any of your shoes to fit the criteria that we need. So, but let's just pick an example here. Let's pick an easy one. So this is a brand called Witten's. They're super cheap on Amazon. They're like $37. They fit all the criteria we've talked about. So once again, I'm gonna put those down. Let's see how my starting posture is. I'm gonna take a deep breath and I'm gonna let it go. Okay, that's how I am right now. Not great, but that's my starting point. I'm now gonna slip the shoes on, and luckily these are pretty easy to get on. And remember, what I'm looking for is either, when I put these shoes on, I'm either exactly the same or better. So, let's see what happens. I'm gonna take a deep breath in, and I'm gonna let it go. Okay, I'm more forward. So that means that these shoes need to be modified. So, the first easy modification we're gonna make we have these guys here, okay? So what these are, are these are varying thicknesses of how that I can raise, remember, that heel just a slight bit more than the toe. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start with the thinnest, which are called heel chips, and I'm gonna slide those 
into the back of my shoe like that without sticking them in yet. I'm gonna put them in there and then I'm gonna put these shoes back on and we're gonna see what happens. So you're gonna put those on both sides. So I've got those in, I'm gonna be very gentle. I'm gonna put my shoe in there to keep that heel chip at the heel. Okay, so there's one. Here comes the second. Okay, so they stayed in the heel. So now let's see what happens to my posture. So I'm gonna take a deep breath in, and I'm gonna let it go. Ah, oh, holy smoly, <laughs> what a difference. Do you see how much better my posture is now that I added a teeny bit of heel? Also watch my breathing. That's a dramatic difference. So we know that's good, at least that is one massive improvement to these shoes that we need to do. Now, the only question is, would I get even more benefit by adding a little bit more on the heel, a little more thickness? So I'm gonna take the thinnest ones out and I'm gonna go to the thicker ones, right? These guys right here. So I'm gonna put those in. I'm gonna gently slip these on. Okay. And let's see what happens. It'll either be even better than it was a second ago or it'll be worse. So let's just see, take a deep breath and let it go. Oh boy, and here I am back to being forward again. So we know that's too much. These are not gonna work in this shoe. So now we know for sure we're gonna put the chips in. So the chips have a little sticky on the back. I'm gonna take that sticky out and I'm gonna put these in. Now, the other thing I want you to notice is if we look inside the shoe, I took out that little foam insert that comes with your shoe, okay? Now, when you're testing your shoes first, test them with the foam inserts in and then test them by pulling the foam inserts out and trying it that way. Every shoe has a foam insert that it comes with. But what you'll find when you look at the foam insert is it typically has an arch support in it. So most of the time, you're gonna need to remove the foam insert out of that shoe in order to make this work. So just so you know, I already took all the foam inserts out of mine because I don't almost ever find the foam insert helps. So I'm gonna stick these in now with a little sticky pad. So here's one. And now I'm gonna stick in the second. Now the last modification we're gonna try is called, there we go is called a dot, okay? And it's literally just a little thin dot. Very cheap, they're like 25 cents. You can get them through us. And now if you're an ABC patient, this is the only time it's gonna apply. So you have to be an ABC patient in order for this to be helpful for you. Now, if you're not, I could teach you a way to see if it helps as well. So this little dot, when you're testing it, is gonna go right on the foot, okay? right i would say here if you guys can see that it's going to go right here in your foot all right it's right kind of in the center of your arch towards the midline side so you can see how i've stuck that right there i'm going to put it on the sock so actually i'm going to do it for mine so i'm a left in abc terms terminology so because i'm a left in abc terms i'm going to stick it on my left foot i'm now going to slip my feet back into these shoes so now I have the chips and I have the heel dot or the foot dot on my left foot because I am a left in ABC. Now, if you're not an ABC patient, you're just gonna stick the dot on a foot and you're gonna see what happens. So remember, I'm now looking, am I even better than I was with just the chips or am I worse? So nice deep breath in and relax way worse with that little chip, or sorry, that little dot. So I'm gonna take that little dot out. That made us worse. I'm gonna recheck, make sure my heels chips are in the right position. I'm gonna re-slip them back on without the dot this time. And let's just see how this is. Okay, I'm gonna take a nice deep breath. And that's gonna be 
the ideal scenario for these shoes. So you can do that with any set of shoes. Now what I typically then do is because the glue is not very sticky, I've already modified these shoes as well. And what you'll see is I have my heel chip in there and you can see I used the little sticker, but then I also took a staple gun and I just put a single staple in there. You can kind of feel it, but really it's not very much at all. It's very thin. And what that does is make sure that that doesn't slip and slide around. So here's another pair of my shoes as well. So you can see how it's a common theme for me that the thin chips are perfect for me. So that's how I've modified all of my shoes to be, is with the little thin chips like that. So that's what you're gonna do guys to modify your shoes because that is another way that you're gonna throw bones forward. So in summary, there's three ways here that your bones get thrown forward. The first one we covered was your pillow setup. Now the other part of that that I didn't mention is when you're setting up that pillow, your mattress needs to be extra firm. And I know a lot of you out there right now are saying, I can't sleep on firm, Patrick. Well, number one, that's probably because you haven't had ABC. If you haven't had ABC, you enjoy soft mattresses. So the more ABC you get, you will be switching to a firmer and firmer and firmer mattress. So that's number one. Now, if you're not a patient of mine at the clinic, just do your best, that's all you can do, okay? So take your mattress, whatever you got, if you can get a firmer one, I highly suggest it, and then set up either the towels or the pillow I suggested. So that's number one. Number two, you then saw how I modified the car seat. So sitting is a big trauma, right? And remember, as I told you in the car there, you don't wanna be sitting on recliners. Recliners gotta go, okay? The lazy boys gotta go. No more sitting on those sofas that make you really sink in like that and you flip the legs up. That's the same problem as the recliner. For a sofa, you want a very firm, angle cut, right? So kind of like those modern sofas, they're flat and very firm. That's the best you can get, and then you use a seat wedge on it, okay? Just like I showed you in the car. So that's number two. And number three is shoes. So I've now showed you guys all three reasons of things that you can do on your own in order to be successful by number one, speeding up how fast you recover by getting ABC, but number two, even if you're not getting ABC here or at another office, at least you can do these things to enhance your life so that your day-to-day -day is much easier. So I hope you guys found this informational. Please go into the link in the description down below, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share this with somebody who you know could benefit, and I love helping everybody out, so give us a call if you guys ever wanna get treated or we can find you someone who does ABC. All right guys, thank you so much.